Today's movie is a special request from Patreon supporter Zach Potter, who asked me to review the movie The Seventh Curse. Okay, I haven't done a Hong Kong movie in a while, but what makes this one so special? Okay, good enough for me. The Seventh Curse is a 1986 Hong Kong action, fantasy, comedy, horror, whatever movie from director Choi Lam Nai, who also directed movies like Three Stooges Go Undercover, The Cat, and Erotic Ghost Story. Oh, and he also directed a little movie called Ricky O, The Story of Ricky. <laughs> Although this movie is usually called The Seventh Curse in North America, it's also known by the title Dr. Yuen and Wisely, which sounds more like a delightful buddy movie and not a horror film about curses. Unlike Story of Ricky, this one isn't widely available in North America, and info on it is a little scarce, but from what I can gather, it's based off of a novel and a series of books about the character Wisely, who's also had several other movie adaptations made about him. Well, hopefully they didn't do the gimmick of splitting the last book in the series into two movies. That is such a cheap way to sell more tickets. Now even though my copy of the movie wasn't dubbed into English, it did still come with subtitles, so unlike the Turkish movies I've done on this show, I actually do know what the plot is here. But that doesn't mean I can't still add some subtitles of my own. Another difference between this and the Turkish movies, this actually has some actors you might recognize in it. Hey, guys, huh? <laughs> yeah. Holy shit, Jackie Chan! What are you doing in this movie? Yes, that really is Chow Yun Fat playing wisely, or way, I guess. And it's lucky they were able to get him considering he made nine other movies that year. I really hope I'm not confused here. I stopped following the series after Curse 2. So anyway, after that intro, we begin with a police standoff where some terrorists are holding people hostage. Because come on, it's a Hong Kong movie. They have to start with an action sequence. Even rom-coms there are required to have a body count of at least 50 people. The other guy from the beginning is Dr. Yuen, or Yuan? Eh, whatever. Who's told by the police to go in to help a hostage that's had a heart attack, but a nosy reporter played by Maggie Chung decides to tag along by impersonating a nurse sent to help him. Alright, get in here. And make it quick, will ya? The shootout from the end of Hard Boiled is filming here in an hour. But one thing these terrorists don't know, in Hong Kong, even mild-mannered doctors are secretly martial arts badasses. <laughs> I have no idea what any of this has to do with a curse, but hey, the action's getting my attention. I am starting to question how accurate the subtitles are in my copy, though. Hmm, I don't think that was right. Okay, most of the hostages are dead now, so you can probably go home, Doc. However, Reporter Girl refuses to leave you on alone, although considering she impersonated someone during a hostage situation, shouldn't she be brought up on charges? And once again, I'm not sure about these subtitles. Hi! Hey look, they're about to Tokyo Drift. Oh, wait, my mistake. Hong Kong Drift. Man, you want such a player, not only does he have the most ballin' apartment ever, but he even has naked women waiting for him there when he gets home. Ooh, and she even comes with her own sleazy saxophone music. I'm sorry. <laughs> you really hurt me. Okay, I'm pretty sure those subtitles were wrong. <laughs> Jeez, another fight scene already? Is the requirement for getting a medical license in Hong Kong that you have to win the Kumite? <laughs> Okay, gets second place in the Kumite. At this point, we learn about the curse part of the movie, since this guy tells Yuan not to have sex with his girlfriend, or it'll reawaken a curse he's been afflicted with. But nobody tells him not to nut. Damn, look at how vascular he is. Oh, wait, that's his leg. 
<laughs> Whoa, baby, I swear this usually doesn't happen to me. When even dressing like Mr. Rogers doesn't help, Yuan decides to go to Wisely for advice. Turns out a year earlier, Yuan was in Thailand trying to find a cure for AIDS, because, you know, 80s. I don't know if he found it or not, but he did find some nudity, which is probably even better. <laughs> <laughs> Even though the subtitles I added were fake, there's a look that says, <laughs> yeah, I was. Apparently, this girl belongs to a society called the Worm Tribe, which specializes in witchcraft. Okay, they may not have found the cure for AIDS, but in other news, there's witches in Thailand. Not only that, but I think they might be summoning Gozer. Look, Doc, I know you're excited because you spotted a hot girl, but I really don't think sneaking in here is a good idea. Hmm, I can't tell if this is the Adam and the Ants tribe or the Ryu from Street Fighter 2 tribe. Oh well, let's see what their leader has to say. <laughs> not only does the Worm Tribe leader have some fabulous makeup skills, but he also has another secret. That's right, he's got his own Quato inside him. Although this one is a lot less friendly. <laughs> That monster is totally a ripoff of the one from Spaceballs. The tribal elder plans to sacrifice the girl Yuan saw earlier. Well, that does it. Nobody sacrifices a potential vacation hookup if I have anything to say about it. What's more, I think they're about to sacrifice her to an extra from Skeleton Warriors. Uh, Skeleton Warriors? Anybody get that reference? <sighs> I watched way too much TV as a kid, didn't I? Uh-oh, I think the movie Skeleton Animatronic just broke down. Oh, never mind, it's working. Huh, I wonder what's Chinese for I'll swallow your soul. I'm beginning to think Sam Raimi might have been a fan of this movie. I really gotta hand it to Hong Kong cinema. Even their puppets have some pretty impressive martial arts skills. <laughs> and some surprisingly shocking gore for a comedy. As if this situation wasn't bad enough, turns out the skeleton is really a xenomorph. Uh, listen, Doc, maybe you should try looking for a cure for AIDS in the south of France. I hear it's really nice this time of year. Granted, the fight choreography isn't as good. I really hope the stuntmen on this movie were paid well, since I think several cast members were set on fire. Don't worry, though, they remember to put them out. Yuan and his colleagues end up getting captured, and as punishment for interrupting the sacrifice, they get ceremonial guacamole poured over them. The tribal leader also forces Yuan to eat some maggots, which is how he ends up getting cursed. Listen, Yuan, pretty much everyone who goes to Thailand and meets a strange girl ends up getting something. This really shouldn't be that surprising. Thankfully, Yuan manages to escape, mainly because if he didn't, the part about him remembering this a year later wouldn't make any sense. And I got some good news for you, Doc. Turns out you might actually get some on this trip after all. The woman Yuan rescued offers him some of her flesh, which will help stave off the curse for a year. Uh, listen, babe, when I said I wanted to suck on your tit, this isn't quite what I meant. Well, nice that we have the backstory out of the way now that we're halfway through the movie. Because it's a year later, that means Yuan's curse is back. Eh, just get some antibiotics and see if that works. Wisely explains that Yuan has seven curses, and when the seventh one bursts in his heart, it'll kill him. Damn, good thing Wisely majored in obscure Thai curses in college. And to think his parents said that degree would never come in handy. They decide to go back to Thailand to try and find a cure. Oh, and Reporter Lady is actually Wisely's cousin and wants to tag along too. Maybe her and Yuan can argue over who has the ugliest sweater. Remember though, this is a Hong Kong movie, so before they go to Thailand, they're gonna need some weapons. <laughs> Hey, 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 come on, Yuan. You can have kinky sex with reporter girl later. Right now, you got work to do. But first, we need another action sequence out of nowhere. Okay, I'm not sure where these guys came from all of a sudden, but hey, in Hong Kong movies, even fight scenes that don't make any sense are still pretty awesome. Oh, right, we brought guns. We can just shoot these guys. Yeah, that's what you get for bringing martial arts to a grenade fight, bitches. Anyway, they learn the Worm Tribe has kidnapped several children from a local village, but come on, that doesn't make them evil. They're just trying to rid the movie of potential Kennys. <laughs> and add to this movie's R rating, apparently. You gotta love a movie that uses a guy getting ripped apart as a gag. Maybe Sam Raimi did like this movie.
Bye, Byla. Yep, see? I knew it. Reporter girl ends up falling into a trap and getting captured, but forget her. Just try and find the naked chick who helped you earlier. Hey, there she is. Huh, I guess she decided to cover up after giving herself a mastectomy a year ago. Meanwhile, I think the Worm Tribe leader is gonna force Reporter Girl to listen to his Cure cover band. By the way, if you're wondering why I keep referring to her as Reporter Girl, the subtitles on my version say her name is Rainbow, which I think sounds less dignified than just calling her Reporter Girl. These two set out to rescue... uh... Rainbow. And again, about those Sam Raimi comparisons. Oh, and when I said I hope the stuntmen on this movie were paid well, I fucking meant it. Look at this, that's not a dummy there. How in the hell did this guy not fucking die? These guys have the right idea for a rescue. Just drive in and start shooting. Yeah, thanks, but I think the shotgun would have been enough to kill that guy. The arrow wasn't really necessary. Again, I don't think the Worm Tribe is that evil. They're just doing what I wish I could do to all the Kennys in a Gamera movie. At last, the terrible secret behind Strawberry Kool-Aid is finally revealed. Okay, this was a surprisingly easy rescue for Rainbow. Uh, shouldn't you at least stick around and try and get rid of your curse or something? Bad news, fellas. I think Rainbow is possessed. Either that or she's really upset you didn't give her the first scoop on the Worm Tribe. <laughs> Again, really hope that guy got hazard pay. Oh hey, there's Chow Yun-Fat. And what are you doing? You can't kill him, he's a future star in America! There, some heroin ought to calm her down. Worm Tribe Girl gives him advice on how to cure Rainbow's curse, which is apparently a tomato juice bath. Curses are a lot like skunks. Plus, she has a terrible secret of her own. <laughs> Oh my god, she's only half hot now! She's like a sexy Harvey Dent! We also find out that once the last curse bursts on Yuan's body, all of his blood will spill out. Then this really will turn into a Sam Raimi movie. Okay, I know I keep bringing up Sam Raimi in this video, but I am genuinely surprised this hasn't turned into an Evil Dead movie. Or at least an early Peter Jackson one. <laughs> Alright, now that that thing's taken care of, time to find a cure for Yuan's curse. Hmm, I really hope that was a set and not a real ancient statue they just broke. And did somebody say action sequence out of nowhere? Yeah, surprise, motherfucker. Monks take a vow of silence, not non-violence. Okay, fellas, stop fighting. After all, violence makes baby Buddha cry. And so does defiling one of his statues. Wow, you know, the Sam Raimi comparisons are getting really on the nose here. Here, we'll switch over to a Steven Spielberg homage, maybe that'll help. I'm not really sure how it happened, but while these guys were gone, Rainbow ended up getting captured again along with Two-Face Girl. Damn, they better hurry if they want to rescue the girls from Chinese Marilyn Manson. Oh, never mind. I guess that skeleton thing from the beginning is gonna do that for him. I don't know if this coffin part of the movie is also a ride at Hong Kong Disneyland, but part of me wants to hope that it is. Hell, they could even use the same skeleton animatronic. <laughs> You know what? I just realized this thing looks like a gritty version of Princess Dragon Mom. How are they gonna beat this thing? Oh right, they have guns. I keep forgetting. Turns out guns don't affect it though. Man, what these guys need is a Chinese Bruce Campbell to fight this thing and Chow Yun-Fat already left. Can anything save them? Ah, the little worm thingy from earlier. Okay, might as well give that a try. Huh, this is like watching a fetus take revenge on the monster that aborted it. And here's a surprise, this tiny cute monster is no match for this big scary one. There's only one thing that can save him now, a future action movie leading man. <laughs> It 
just goes to show, if guns don't fix your problem, just try using something bigger until it does. Wait a second, didn't this thing pull this trick before? <laughs> I may be dead for real now, but I totally got you guys. You should have seen the looks on your faces. Okay, the monster's dead, which apparently cured you on of his curse, so I guess that means the movie's over now. Oh well, considering Cognac was apparently a sponsor, maybe they just wanted to get back to drinking. I don't have any box office figures for the seventh curse, but it must have done pretty well since the character wisely returned in several movies after this. Although this is the only time Chow Yun-Fat played the character, and with the exception of the cat, none of them were directed by Choi. Lam Nai. Which is too bad, because based on this movie, I'd watch a series where Chow Yun-Fat went on weird horror adventures if this director made him. This movie isn't as gory or crazy as Story of Ricky, which is kinda like saying something isn't as wet as the Pacific Ocean, but it's still chock full of batshit insanity. Fetus monsters, skeletons, tons of gunplay, random kung fu fight scenes, random skeleton fight scenes, random fetus fight scenes. I mentioned Evil Dead and Indiana Jones in this video, but this is actually pretty close to seeing those two things put together in one movie. And at only an hour and 18 minutes long, it doesn't overstay its welcome, although I have I've heard other versions of the movie run a little longer, which probably explains the abrupt ending here. Plus, with movie crossovers being all the rage, this director has a perfect chance to bring back both Wisely and Ricky. I personally would love to know who would win in a fight between Ricky and this little worm demon. Well, that's all for now. Until next time.